Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about meningitis. <coughs> meningitis is an inflammatory disease of the leptomeninges, which are the tissues surrounding the brain and spinal cord. The meninges consist of three parts, the pia, arachnoid and dura metal. Microorganisms reach the meninges either by direct extension from the ears, the nasal pharynx, cranial injury or by bloodstream. Non-infectious causes of meningitis include malignant cells, blood following subarachnoid hemorrhage, then drugs such as NSAIDs, antibiotics like saptrin, IV immunoglobulins. So the two major classifications of meningitis is bacterial meningitis and aseptic meningitis. Aseptic meningitis generally is caused by viruses such as enteroviruses, Coxsackie, ecovirus and mumps virus. So the types of meningitis depending on cause may be present as acute or a chronic illness. Acute bacterial meningitis is the most important form. Major causes of chronic meningitis include TB and cryptococcal infection. Cryptococcal infection is not common in children though. So what are the bacterial causes of meningitis? So Neisseria meningitidis, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Staphylococcus aureus, Group B Streptococcus, Haemophilus influenza, Listeria monocytogens, Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Treponema pallidum. So, what are the common causes of bacterial meningitis in the different age groups? So, from birth to four weeks, it's group B streptococcus, E. coli, and you may also have Klebsiella listeria monocytogens. Then, four weeks to eight weeks, in addition to the above organisms, Streptococcus pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenza become more common. And in three months of age going up, Streptococcus pneumonia and Haemophilus influenza become common. And then from six years of age, Streptococcus pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza, and in addition, Neisseria meningitidis. So, what are the viral causes of meningitis? Enteroviruses such as Coxsackie virus and Ecovirus, Mumps virus, Herpes simplex virus, HIV, Epstein Barr virus. Then fungal causes are Cryptococcus neoformans, Candida albicans, and Coccidioides imitis. What are the clinical features of meningitis? So the clinical features are characterized by a triad of neck stiffness, altered mental state, and fever. Photophobia and vomiting are often present. In acute bacterial infection, the symptoms are usually intense and this develops within hours. Patient is irritable and prefers to lie still. Many viral meningitis are less severely are less severe and the signs are less of meningitis are less prominent. However, fatal bacterial meningitis may also be indolent with a mild onset. So let's talk about bacterial meningitis. Patients with bacterial meningitis are usually quite ill and often present soon after symptom onset. The classic triad of acute bacterial meningitis consists of fever, nuchal rigidity, and a change in mental status. An appreciable number of patients do not have all three features. However, most patients have high fevers, often greater than 38 degrees Celsius, but a small percentage may have hypothermia. Almost no patients have a normal temperature. Headache is common and it's described as severe and generalized. In addition to the classical presentation, other clinical presentations can be seen. Neurological complications such as seizures, focal neurological deficits including cranial nerve palsies, and patients with listeria meningitis have an increased tendency to have seizures and focal neurologic deficits early in the course of infection. Certain bacteria, particularly Neisseria meningitis, can cause characteristic skin manifestations such as petechia and palpable purpura. Then arthritis occurs in some patients with bacterial meningitis. Bacterial meningitis tends to spray other organs unless severe sepsis ensues. So on examination, you find nuchal rigidity, which refers to passive or active flexion of the neck 
will usually result in an inability to attach the chin to the chest. And then we've got Koenig's sign, which refers to inability or reluctance to allow full extension of the knee when the hip is flexed 90 degrees. And then we've got Brzezinski's sign, which refers to spontaneous flexion of the hips during attempted passive flexion of the neck. So what is the clinical presentation in a pediatric patient? Depends on the age of the child, duration of infection and the etiology. So neonates up till 3 months. In neonates, the signs are those of infection in general. The signs are subtle. Fever is the commonest. Hypothermia occurs less. And there is irritability, excessive crying, lethargy, vomiting, failure to feed and seizures are common. Signs of meningeal irritation are late features. So as the clinical features that we have talked about previously that are common in adults are not very common in a pediatric patient. They are late features. Then if a patient, if the thing, infant is beyond 4 months, the infant presents with signs of meningeal irritation in form of neck stiffness, Koenig's and Brudinsky sign, tenseness of the anterior fontanelle occur, and then the progressing this progressing if untreated to opisthotonus. Six years and above, basically all the children, they present with fever, headache, vomiting, mental confusion, lethargy, and seizures. It's followed by progressive decline in sensorium within 24 to 36 hours. Next stiffness, photophobia, Koenig's and Brudinsky sign may all be present. Eventually, patients become comatose. Focal neurological deficits are not generally seen in acute bacterial meningitis but occur in TB, fungal and viral meningoencephalitis. So where are the lab features? When you do a full blood count, the white blood cell count is usually elevated with a shift towards immature forms. However, in severe infection, it can be associated with leukopenia. Platelet count may also be reduced. Leukopenia and thrombocytopenia have correlated with a poor outcome in patients with bacterial meningitis. Then coagulation studies may be consistent with disseminated intravascular coagulation. Serum chemistry te tests are usually commensurate with the severity of the overall process. Blood cultures are often positive and can be useful in the event that CSF cannot be obtained before the administration of antimicrobials because as we know that we need to obtain CSF cultures or see we basically a CSF sample before we start administering any form of treatment and cultures obtained after antimicrobial therapy are much less likely to be positive particularly for meningococcus so under bacterial meningitis, if you do cerebrospinal fluid analysis, biochemistry and microscopic culture and sensitivity including gram stain, lumbar puncture should be performed if there is no contraindication. CS cerebrospinal fluid is a clear colorless fluid. Normal CSF values are protein less than 0.5 grams per liter. CSF to serum glucose ratio should be above 0.6, less than white blood cells per microliter and lactate less than 3.5 milli equivalents per liter. So what are the CSF findings in bacterial meningitis? So appearance will be turbid or purulent. Protein would be 0 0.5 to 2 grams per liter, which is basically raised. Polymorphs would be 200 to 300 per microliter. Mononuclear cells will be less than 50 per microliter. And glucose will be less than 0.5% less than 0.5 of blood glucose. And then a gram stain should be obtained whenever there is suspicion of bacterial meningitis. Gram positive diplococcus suggests pneumococcal infection. Gram negative diplococcus suggests meningococcal infection. Small pleomorphic gram negative cocobacilli suggests hemophilus influenza infection. Gram positive rods and cocobacilli suggest listerial infection. So what is the treatment of bacterial meningitis? Well, we usually like to do culture and sensitivity, but then we can't usually wait, so we always have to start with empirical treatment. So, when it's unknown, then the antibiotic that you'd like to give is cefotaxime. 
and alternative you can give expand and chloramphenicol if it's meningococcus then you give expand alternatively you give cefotaxim if it's pneumococcus then the antibiotic of choice is cefotaxim and an alternative is expand Hemophilus antibiotic is cefotaxim and an alternative choice is chloramphenicol then how do you manage meningococcal meningitis it should be notified to public health authorities immunization should be done prophylaxis for contacts using ciprofloxacin 500 mg stat rifampicin 10 mg per kg body weight for 2 days or ceftriaxone 250 mg im stat then recurrent pneumococcal meningitis prevention by vaccination and hemophilus influenza is also prevention by vaccination and then tuberculous meningitis this one causes chronic meningitis so the clinical features that are going to be present will be vague headache lassitude anorexia and vomiting drowsiness focal neurological signs such as hemiparesis diplopia papillo edema and seizures so what are the typical csf findings of tuberculous meningitis appearance will be turbid or viscous mononuclear cells will be 100 to 300 per milli milliliter polymorph cells will be 0 to 200 protein 0 0.5 to 3 grams per liter and glucose will be left less than half of normal blood glucose or Organisms are scanty and will rarely be seen after staining with Zill Nelson steam. However, CSF PCR, which we commonly refer to as gene expert, is more sensitive. CT scan of the brain may reveal meningeal enhancement, a tuberculoma or hydrocephalus, and then the treatment is basically anti-tuberculosis drugs. Viral meningitis is almost always a benign and self-limiting condition that lasts four to ten days. Common causes of accept common cause of aseptic meningitis. However, headache may follow for some months. There are no sequelae unless encephalitis is present. Then enteroviral meningitis. Enteroviruses are thought to be the most common cause of viral meningitis. There are a diverse group of RNA viruses including Coxsackie A and B, ecoviruses and poliovirus. They are common for greater than 50% of cases and approximately 90% of cases in which a specific etiologic agent is identified. Majority of cases in children or adolescents, but patients of any age can be affected. It's transmitted primarily by fecal oral route, but can also be spread by contact with infected respiratory secretions. Clinical presentation typically includes headache, fever, nausea, vomiting, malaise, photophobia, and meningismus. It can also include rash, upper respiratory infection in symptoms, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Treatment is basically supportive as disease is self-limiting. So what are the CSF findings in viral meningitis? Appearance will be clear, turbid, mononuclear cells will be 10 to 100, polymorphs will not be present, Protein will be 0.4 to 0.8 grams per liter. Glucose will be greater than half of normal blood glucose. Then herpes simplex meningitis. It's generally caused by HSV2 as opposed to encephalitis which is caused by HSV1. It can be due to primary or recurrent HSV infection. So the clinical presentations include headache, photophobia and meningismus. Occasionally, patients present with more severe signs including urinary retention, paresthesia, weakness of upper or lower extremities, or ascending myelitis. Genital lesions are typically present 85% of the time and usually precede the CNS symptoms by 7 days. So what is the treatment? Most cases are self-limited and will require only symptomatic treatment. Antiviral therapy is recommended in patients with primary HSV infection or with severe neurologic symptoms. In patients, you give IV acyclovir 10 mg per kg 8 hourly. Outpatient with high dose oral acyclovir, valacyclovir or famcyclovir. Patients with frequent recurrences might benefit from acyclovir prophylaxis. Go to fungal meningitis.
Commonly, we have cryptococcal meningitis. In HIV infected patients, cryptococcus is commonly presents as a subacute meningitis. Classic meningeal symptoms and signs such as neck stiffness and photophobia occur in only one quarter to one third of patients. Some patients experience encephalopathic symptoms such as lethargy, altered mental state, personality changes, and memory loss. Encephalopathic symptoms are usually a result of increased intracranial pressure thought to result from impaired cerebrospinal fluid absorption or yeast infection of the brain. Cryptococcosis is usually, usually is disseminated when diagnosed in an HIV-infected patient. As you may know that cryptococcal meningitis is an opportunistic infection. Any organ of the body can be involved and skin lesions may be myriad, including umbilicated skin lesions mimicking molluscum contagiosum. Isolated pulmonary infection is also possible. Symptoms and signs include cough and dyspnea in association with an abnormal chest radiograph, which typically demonstrates lobar consolidation, although lobar and nodular infiltrates have been reported. Pulmonary cryptococcosis may present as acute respiratory distress syndrome and mimic pneumocystis pneumonia. Cryptococcal disease can be diagnosed through culture of blood or CSF, CSF microscopy with India ink staining or cryptococcal antigen detection. In patients with HIV-related cryptococcal meningitis, 55% of blood cultures and 95% of cerebrospinal fluid cultures are positive and visible colonies can be detected within 7 days. India ink staining of CSF demonstrates encapsulated yeast in 60% to 80% of cases. CSF cryptococcal antigen is usually positive in patients with meningoencephalitis. Serum cryptococcal antigen is usually positive in both meningeal and non-meningeal infection and may be present weeks to months before symptom onset. A positive serum cryptococcal antigen test should prompt a lumbar puncture to rule out meningeal disease. Treating cryptococcus consists of three phases. There is induction, consolidation and maintenance therapy. The preferred induction treatment for cryptococcal meningitis and other forms of extrapulmonary cryptococcus is a lipid formulation of amphotericin B in combination with flucytosine. Amphotericin B deoxycholate formation at a dose of 0.7 to 1 mg per kg daily with flucytosine at a dose of 100 mg per kg daily in 4 divided doses for greater than or equal to 2 weeks in patients with normal renal function. After two weeks of successful injection therapy, which is defined as substantial clinical improvement and a negative CSF culture, after repeat lumbar puncture, amphotericin B and flucytosin can be discontinued. Follow-up or consolidation therapy is initiated with fluconazole 400 mg daily for at least eight weeks. Subsequently, the fluconazole should be reduced to 200 mg daily in the maintenance phase, which is given for life or until CD4 count is above 350 cells per microliter for more than 6 months. So that's all about meningitis. If you like the video, please like, comment, subscribe. If you felt that there was something that was wrong or maybe I made a mistake, please let me know so I can make appropriate corrections. Thank you.